One of the things I found very interesting about this was the discussion about the evolutionary basis for mania. Um, and, and this is interesting to me personally because you know, this is a very personal story, I guess, but when I was in residency, um, I was encouraged uh, by my wife actually to see a psychiatrist. She had some concern about um, some of my behaviors. And the psychiatrist, after one day, I, I don't know if she was right or wrong, um, but she decided I was hypomanic. That was her diagnosis. Um, and that of course got me very interested in, well, why is this the case? How does she know? What, why would this be? And, and I began sort of examining everything I'd ever done in life. And, and one of the things I came across was at the time, it was a psychiatrist at Hopkins. So this would have been kind of 2004, 2005, had written a book suggesting that the prevalence of hypomania in North America was higher than anywhere else in the world because it had the highest concentration of recent immigrants. And the argument was, well, by definition, if you have a collection of people who are one to five generations away from people who had basically the nerve to leave a comfortable life elsewhere, and in the case of certainly my parents and many people who came here, basically to come to nothing. You don't know the language, you don't know the culture, you don't know the people. Um, it wouldn't be surprising that you could concentrate hypomania here. A, I'm curious as to whether you have any thoughts about that theory, but perhaps more importantly, let's dive into this evolutionary basis for mania because the, the point that you get into about how there are some times when traits are very valuable at the population level and not at the individual level, I found that, I found that fascinating. Well, first of all, that's a very interesting uh, 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 route into this, this discussion, uh, which is the, the uh, immigrants, the, the recent immigrants, and the uh, possible you know, genetic uh, link to have the, you know, in recent times, to have the get up and go, to leave, uh, to take the risks, to have the energy, uh, to have the motivation to, and, uh, to, to, to actually make it happen, to sustain it, this complex goal with, with so many uh, possible downsides. That's, that's no small thing. Some people wouldn't want to do it, some would. And mania is, it's one of the poles of bipolar disorder, uh, which is a very genetic, highly genetic uh, disorder. One of the most in, in psychiatry, bipolar type one disorder, uh, extraordinarily genetically determined. And, and what is it? Well, it's and, and sorry, just poles. to be clear, Carl, does that mean that bipolar stems from bipolar or it just clusters with other psychiatric illness? So in other words, uh, schizophrenia or uh, significant depression would also be genetic precursors to it. What it means in this case is that it's, uh, if you look at uh, monozygotic twins, uh, especially those that are, are raised apart, that's where the most uh, uh, you know, pure information comes from. You can look at the concordance of, of uh, mania or bipolar disorder appearing in each of these twins. And how high uh, is it? Identical twins. Uh, it's more than 50% uh, for bipolar type one, actually, in fact, verging above uh, 70%. Wow. And so you have a, a very strong uh, bipolar type one genetic And just out of so curiosity, of all, what is it for autism in that same setting? Autism also high, um, just maybe just a touch under that. Okay. Um, with depression, it's like fifty percent, uh, and so uh, most of the psychiatric disorders have uh, strong genetic links. They tend to be less than eighty percent, um, uh, but but in this kind of fifty to eighty percent wow. range for many of the, the severe ones, uh, from depression to schizophrenia uh, to autism to, to bipolar. And so this is something we we face in in schizophrenia uh, and and in autism. Uh, and in, but in bipolar, it's, it's, it's extremely strong. So right away, we know there's that link. And mania is the positive pole of, of, of bipolar disorder. The other pole is depression. People with bipolar uh, type 1 have had at least one manic episode where they have a period of time, could be a week, uh, where they've had this very clear, discrete state of elevated mood, increased goal-directed activity, projects, plans, spending, taking risks, faster speech, not needing sleep, truly not needing uh, sleep, not, not nearly as much. Um, uh, and, you know, honestly, even though this causes problems and serious problems and, and not to sugarcoat it at all, mania 
can do terrible things. People make very poor decisions. They it can be fatal. Are, yeah, I was just gonna say, aren't people even slightly more likely to harm themselves during a manic phase than the depressive phase? Yes, or the transition from out of depression to to mania. That's actually probably the most risky time mm. when they they may still have might still have some of the negativity from the depression, but now they've they have got the energy the, to energy. Act. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so that not not to say there's, you know, it, it's a it's a problem, but but yet at the same time, you know, some of my most memorable experiences in talking with manic patients is I actually love talking to them because there's such a, a charge of, of energy. Anything's possible. They're they're funny, they're warm, they're they're charismatic. Uh, and it's and it's so easy to see that this is a this is a state that's it's not a bunch of random things happening in the brain. This is a, a coherent state of elevated mood. It's consistent. You see it in one patient, you see it in another patient. It's something that's that's there that that human beings have as something they can do, a sustained state of elevated mood and energy. And and you look at that and you think, okay, you know, why? And and also uh, you know, what does that mean for treatment? Is there an ethical issue with, with treatment? Is there are there cases where mania is is positive? And and this is something that the story in the book in projections really made me think uh, so hard about. This was this was actually when the seed for the book was first planted in, in, in my head. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.